Okay, now we're upstairs in Jane's beautiful home uh, in the Jackson, Michigan area, and we'll start off with this sculpture you were just describing. Well, this is a beautiful piece of sculpture I just love. It's from Steve Sales, and he is a well-known local steel sculptor. Okay. So I'm just tickled to death to have a piece of his work in the house. All right. And then most of the uh, artwork is either from our travels mm. or um, original art. We just, just, mm. I have the benefit of... Uh, meeting other artists and sometimes we barter and sometimes we just outright buy and support each other's work because we get it, you know. And you have just a beautiful log cabin and interior wood throughout. It's just a gorgeous home. Uh, nice uh, stone fireplace there. So we'll just continue our conversation in this Alrighty. lovely setting here. Alrighty. Alright. And downstairs you're going I How about the armory arts? Uh, the armory, the old prison in downtown Jackson, yes. How did you get involved in that? What was the, the mission there? Well, it was, you know, how most things in life, uh, if you've lived long enough, your life has taken some kind of a crazy path. Uh -huh. I was a parole and probation officer. Oh, my. Um, but I was involved in the arts community, and I would write grants for the local arts um, council, mm. and that... And I had that left brain balance. So the left is the logical side and the right is the creative side? Right. Okay. And so when um, Nita Delaney had kind of spearheaded this project about this live-work community for artists. Can you tell us who, who Nita is? Nita was a, a community advocate who really saw um, the create, rise of the creative class, that Richard Florida book. Mm. about using arts and entrepreneurship to change communities into places where young people want to stay mm. and um, people want to live and raise their children. They're picking communities that are full of uh, culture and arts and restaurants and music and, and a lot of different things. I think the last time we met, you, you said there was some data to support that successful communities have a strong cultural base. Right. And so we're trying to build that in Jackson and appreciate that. And that, that. was kind of the, um, the thought process to make a live workspace, mm -hmm. affordable live workspace that artists could live and have studio spaces. And really, it's an incubator. It's mm -hmm. an entrepreneurial ship incubator. For artists. For artists. Neat. That we would give you the free space in the prison? In the prison. Or the former prison. It's not yeah, currently a prison, but, prison. Which is a pretty cool looking building. It is building, very, very me. cool building. Mm -hmm. And um, housing based on your income. Mm -hmm. And then you build a business from it. So that was um, the thoughts about how that project would develop. And as I drive by, it looks like there's some residual remnant of that. Uh, called Is it called the armory? Well, there's the Armory Arts, but then next door was the building, it's Art 634, okay. which was an old wheel wagon, uh, a wagon wheel factory mm -hmm. that employed some of the prisoners. But that's where Steve Sales, that sculptor I was just talking about, his vision is was kind of what started the whole Armory Arts project. He bought that building, and then he rented out cheap, artist studio space. I was one of the artists and a couple of the artists who are in these uh, business workshops were as well. Mm -hmm. And he just wanted artists to have cheap space and build their craft. Mm -hmm. And so then that kind of grew into the Armory Arts Project and the Art 634 then kind of became a creative retail space. Mm -hmm. So as I drive by, there's some kind of sign there. Is, is there anything happening there, or is that just the the old sign that they... they oh, the put? artists are still at the armory. Okay, great. Yes, they're still living there, um, and they're still doing their craft and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of them need to embrace that entrepreneurial spirit because it wasn't designed that we would make you successful. Mm -hmm. It was that we will give you space and tools right yes but you must build <clears throat> your business you can lead an artist to water but you can't make him or her drink exactly <laughs> they have to actually drink and put it all together exactly <laughs> okay and you're no longer involved in that project 
No, and that was, you know, for, for me personally, it was just long hours and mm -hmm. frustration that I'm not here to make you successful. Mm -hmm. And um, the developer, on the other hand, just wanted full apartments, regardless if they were artists. Mm. And so it was just, for me personally, um, I just felt like it was a no-win situation. Mm -hmm. I was working too long hours and hitting walls. Yeah, kind of lost the, the mission by not having it dedicated to artists, but just throwing other folks in there. Right. So you wouldn't have that, that culture of entrepreneurship you're trying to develop. Right, and the, and the artists themselves understanding that this is up to you. Uh huh. It isn't my job Yes. to make you an entrepreneur. So you are now engaged in, in an online, not just online sales, but the online training, as I understand. You're actually conducting entrepreneurial classes online? Well, I'm doing them in person. Mm. Um, downtown at the Hosmer Center with Spring Arbor. Okay. Um, but it's based on a book I wrote, an ebook on the business of creativity. Okay. Because my um, the blog that I told you about, I, I have my artist website. I have an artist blog, which is just random musings about creativity. And is this art? Epicurean, the, the URL That's my, is... My, my regular website is the Jane Robinson Abstract Art. Okay. But then the art Epicurean mm -hmm. has moved to be Moxie Marketplace. M-O-X-Y Marketplace, right. one, one big block. Okay. Right. And so that's the website dedicated to giving artists or any creatives, whether you're a floral designer, yoga coach, uh -huh. chef, whatever, um, business tips on how to build your business nice. and, and what are the steps to do. And those are free of charge or are you uh, the offering The book is free of courses? charge it really? for signing up mm -hmm. um, for my, um, my blog website. So you get the updates every week in your inbox. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. What a great service. Yeah, I was under the impression that you also offered courses online, but you're not, your courses are actually face-to-face -face now? The courses are face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. but I'll be offering some, like, webinars and that through the Moxie Marketplace. Okay, great. And so, again, students would just go to Moxie, moxiemarketplace.com, and they could see from time to time what you're offering? Right. If they sign up for the e free ebook, um, they'll be getting updates mm -hmm. regularly about what's next, what's going on. I offer as well a free or a complimentary 30-minute mm -hmm. strategy session oh, with anyone who wants to brainstorm their creative business idea. Would that be face-to-face -face or it like can through be. Skype? It, it depends on their location. Face-to-face. -face. Oh, I've been doing them face-to-face -face, um, over the telephone, Skyping, whatever works. And we talk about your creative business terrific, and what you might want to do next. And let's get a plan in place. So you know where, you know, where to go next. Well, thank you for doing that. Uh, if I can ask just a couple more questions. One thing I found in, in the courses I teach is that students learn the most from hearing um, stories from successful entrepreneurs of two things. What really works well, maybe things they didn't think. And we know that every successful entrepreneur has failed before he or she has succeeded. So some of those landmines that, oh man, when I started out, this looked so good and I tried it and it just totally blew up in my face and don't do that. So any of those come to mind, things that you must do, things that you might not have thought of, but wow, if you do this, it will really help. And things that avoid this, like the plague, even though it looks good, it will destroy your business. Yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I say my, um, the mistake I've made and the thing I'm doing now is capture your collector's list. Your, your collectors, your fans, all of that are your greatest asset. Mm -hmm. And starting from day one, I don't care if you write them on a 